This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand. Good morning. You have tuned your radio to Deep South Dining, or it is Monday morning at 9-ish a.m. Carol Puckett with Malcolm White. Good morning, Carol. Good morning, Mal. How are you today? I'm feeling pretty uh, spunky today. I can tell. That was some good traveling music to come into. Indeed it was. And speaking of traveling, we're glad that Hurricane Delta has traveled on through our area. I don't know about you guys' yards, but mine was littered with the aftermath of Delta. I've been working on that all weekend. Just a few sticks. But out in out in Edwards from our vista, we could see the whole swirly thing in 360 <clears throat> degrees. It was just it was just amazing to see you know all the trees waving all around in in a big circle. It was uh, crazy and frightening, but really beautiful. Yeah, and we look forward to the end of hurricane season and the beginning of fall here. And, uh, you know, you and I were busy this past week in your kitchen, speaking of your place, uh, doing a little cooking demonstration for the Mississippi Arts Commission's statewide arts conference. And boy, did we have fun. I thought it was a great concept. They uh, actually showed our video during the virtual lunch break, but... Um, Mal, it was fun being in the kitchen with you. We hadn't done it in way too long. And next time we do it, we're going to bring Java Chapman yes. into the mix. He's a soul man. There and he is. we're going to bring him in. But, um, I, yeah, I thought it was a great idea. We were trying to use things we had. And we made a turkey Rubenstein named after our friend who is no longer with us, Michael Rubenstein, who many people remember is a great sports announcer and lover of the SWAC conference. And a former classmate of mine in high school. Yeah, he's the, he was the <clears throat> big boy. Uh, but the thing you know, that made our, our demo different was we did it on my ironing board. And uh, last night I finally got around to cleaning my iron. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so there's a little sauerkraut on your iron. So yes, yeah, so what? So what? But, uh, you know, our our mission was to do a, a Biloxi Press Po' Boy. Right. And, you know, a lot of people don't know about uh, the delights of the Press Po' Boy. Of course, in Biloxi, they don't use an iron and an ironing yeah. board. Well, you know, I got a, several uh, comments on our cooking and coping page uh, when we were talking about um, what we cooked and how we cooked it. Uh, and one person said, hey, look, you can just use a George Foreman for that. You don't have to get your ironing board and iron out. And another person, of course, talked about the panini process, which we cooked two sandwiches. We pressed one on the ironing board very non-traditional, and we pressed one on a panini uh, uh, skillet, which you did. So, yeah, you can use a George Foreman, you can use uh, an iron, you can you can use a, a panini press. Well, I mean, we were d using the ironing board because it's, it's a historical way for you to do the press po' boy. I hark back to a lecture you did in front of several hundred chefs and culinary enthusiasts where you extolled the virtues of the press po' boy, which most people had never heard of. And you right. were on stage with an ironing board and iron because there was no stove. <laughs> you, were, you were just being creative. But you know, what else, what else I loved about our demo the other day was we did John Currence's cucumber salad. He had been mm -hmm. on the show that week and you know, we thought about it. And it was it was delicious. Yeah, he called it a Mississippi Delta cu white cucumber and onion salad, and it was terrific. And we had fun making that as a side dish to our turkey 
pressed Rubenstein. And by the way, Carol, that turkey breast was remarkable. Tell me how you made that. Well, thanks. Uh, it was a recipe that I've used for years out of the Barefoot Contessa, just a simple herb roasted turkey breast. But you chop together a, bu a bunch of different herbs, a lot of sage, some rosemary, some parsley, and, uh, you know, and lots of garlic and olive oil. And you make it into a paste and then rub it all over the turkey. And then, you know, if you can, slip your hand under the skin of the turkey and, you know, rub it on that, too, and simply roast it in the oven. So it was a boneless uh, turkey breast that you started with, and uh, but you left the skin on, which gave it an awful lot of flavor, and it was not dry. It was very juicy. And look, when I brought it home to Kara, game changer, she said she would be in touch with you very soon about that recipe. Well, and actually, it had the bone in it. When oh, I okay. Start, when I started off on this last week, I went to find a turkey, and who knew? They don't even put whole turkeys out till November. No. But in the freezer section at Kroger, they had these beautiful, like, 8 to 10-pound bone-in turkey breasts. So um, I highly, highly recommend it. And I forgot to say you pour wine in the bottom. I guess you could use another liquid. Yeah, like, no, not, like white wine. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, but it, it, it comes up yeah, very, very moist. So that uh, podcast or that uh, I don't know, what do you call it, uh, presentation that we recorded uh, for the Mississippi Arts Commission Statewide Arts Conference will be posted uh, on, on this site, and people can download it and watch it. I don't know how long it is, a little bit long, but uh, if you're interested, uh, Java, what, what, is that right? We're going to put it on the... Yeah, we're going to put it on the podcast. I'll put the link up, and it's about about 30 minutes, so kind of a, yeah. a you know, a lunch deal, because just think about it. You guys made your entire meal um, in like 30 minutes, so, you know, you can spend your lunch yeah. hour with, with you guys in, in Carol's beautiful kitchen. It's a, it's a nice peek behind the curtain if, uh, if you never, <laughs> never got a chance to uh, be with Malcolm and Carol. Well, now, Java, you... I'm sorry. Go ahead, Karen. No, but, well, I was just going to say we also did another uh, photo shoot on Friday and actually had uh, oyster dressing in Turkey. So we're thinking fall and thinking ahead. Yeah, that was fun uh, doing that photo shoot with uh, the Becks over at your house again. A second time we used your kitchen in one week. Remarkable. Now, Java had uh, brought up a point that he was curious about this fancy schmancy measuring cup that you used uh, when we were measuring the uh, vinegar and the water uh, for, for the cucumber and onion salad. Well, for one thing, now I don't have to wonder what to get Java for Christmas. But it, it's a measuring cup that I used to sell in my everyday gourmet days when I owned the Everyday Gourmet, and I'm sure it's in probably in grocery stores by now, but uh, it's, it's by a company called OXO, but it's absolutely brilliant. Sometimes the most simple things are, and you know how when you fill a measuring cup with liquid, you have to kind of get down on the side and right. look, look to see? This, you look straight down in it. It has like an oval circle, so when you pour a half cup or a cup in it it's right in front of your eyes yeah uh, very handy uh a gizmo to have in the kitchen not something that you would just throw in a drawer and never use but something literally you could use, uh, I use on it. A daily yeah uh, every day now carol give us an update on cooking and coping our facebook page it's been blowing up this week you made a a, a really interesting post about a, a lecture or uh, a, a Zoom call or a conference call that you were on, and it really got a lot of response from our our folks out there in um, uh, Facebook land. Well, I was part of, of another uh, group on Friday. It was actually the International Women's Forum, the Mississippi chapter, and we did a virtual program, and the topic was creativity and coping during the pandemic, and uh, five of us told our stories I was asked to tell the story of cooking and coping and it was moderated by Amy Witten 
Mm. who is a Mississippi legend, but also one of our our posters. And, you know, she told people, she said, you know, here we started on March 20th with three people, Malcolm, Carol, and Leanne Galt, who helped us get it up. And now we're up to 3,000. And she said that is more people than many towns in Mississippi. I love small, that comment. You know, small <laughs> towns. And it, you know, it really is a community. Um, you know, we go from a small island in Japan to Jenny Pugh Fernandez, Hernandez in Spain. Uh, one of our posters is from Taiwan. She posted this week that they were just coming out of quarantine for 14 days and, you know, she had gone to the market. But uh, this weekend, there were a lot of posts of autumn foods. Did did you see that? People have really switched gears. Yeah, people have really turned the corner uh, from summer <clears throat> to fall. You're, I'm seeing, and of course, I'm sharing with you, lots of soups. We're seeing pot pies and roasts, casseroles, and my brother's favorite, the one pot. I love the one pot cooking this time of year. I do too. But my favorite post was from uh, Kristen Williams from the David Carey Kristen Williams household. Uh, I think I might have sent it to you on text, but it was a mustard crusted mini meatloaf and it had roasted apples and roasted Brussels sprouts. And it just said, okay. This is autumn. This is yes. Fall. That was a, a lovely dish uh, with the mini meatloaf, and it did. It just screamed uh, fall, autumn, uh, whichever term you prefer. Uh, but yes, it was gorgeous, and we really appreciate her uh, interaction. Kara made a giant uh, pan of chicken spaghetti last night. Now, to me, that's another uh, great dish for the fall. It's also a great dish for crowds if you're. You know, funerals, uh, revivals, football. none of which we have anymore, football, <laughs> none of which we have tailgating. So we just made a giant pot uh, of uh, chicken spaghetti. I say we, and I, I use that term loosely, Kara made a giant pot. That uh, would be pot the of, royal we. The royal we. And she, she made extra because I'm headed up to Pickwick Lake uh, this coming week uh, with a group of my uh, friends from the Boonville days. And we will be eating the chicken spaghetti. And one friend has made a uh, chicken cassoulet. Another friend uh, has made a pork tenderloins. And another one is bringing tamales and steaks. And there will also be an opportunity to visit the legendary Catfish Hotel uh, up in Tennessee on the Tennessee River. So we've got a big week planned ahead. Uh, and we will do, be doing some cooking and coping of our own and watching of baseball football, and basketball. Well, it sounds great. And if the Catfish Hotel has any memorabilia like baseball caps or T-shirts or anything for sale, if you would bring me something for my significant other, John Palmer, who is from that neck of the woods, I would appreciate it. It would be a, a nice way to say Merry Christmas. I will try to remember that. As you know, I have a fainting memory. Um, I tell you what we're going to do right now, though. We're going to take our first break of the show. When we come back, we will talk to the one and only Chef Nick Wallace. He will join us and talk about his efforts to help families uh, with access to quality foods and his latest partnerships that he's engaged in, along with what he's been cooking in his own kitchen. So stay tuned. Every week, we explore practical advice about law, healthcare, and gardening. We delve into arts, cooking, and people and places that make our state great. Contribute now at mpbonline.org. MPB and you, let's do this together. I'm from Mississippi. Hold up. Maybe I'm so southern, I sometimes scare ignorant people's perception of independence. I'm from Mississippi. I'm from Mississippi. Get with it. You're listening to Deep South Dining right here on MPB Think Radio. Malcolm White, Carol Puckett, and we're from Mississippi. And this is the show all about the culture of Southern flavor. Carol, why don't you introduce our very special guest today? 
Well, it's the one and only Nick Wallace. Uh, Nick is a Mississippi chef who has brought great honor to us and to our culinary scene here in Mississippi. He has uh, deep roots in Edwards, Mississippi, been around the block. He's had restaurants. He's been on numerous television shows. He's cooked at the James Beard House, and he always has a project going on. So that's why you and I love to check in with him at least a couple of times a year because, wow, this guy's busy. That's right. Uh, it's Nick Wallace time. It's, right it's here Nick on Wallace Southdown. time. And he's already had a haircut this morning, and um, he's <laughs> rolling into the day. <laughs> Good morning, Nick. How you doing, buddy? Uh, I, I'm doing good. How are y'all? Thank y'all. We for are well. Me too. Yeah, man. How's it going? It's going good. Um, you know, this COVID time, man. It's it's bringing out the creative juices. Um, but but I'm just uh, appreciative of all the work in the past because you know a lot of things is coming this you know my way as far as you know mentorship all that kind of stuff. So um, I'm pretty thankful. Um, and, and, and still I'm doing well. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy, blessed. Great. Now you grew up country in Edwards, but, uh, you're based primarily out of the city of Jackson now. Is that right? Yes, sir. I, I, I grew up in Edwards with no shoes on chasing dewberries <laughs> and digging up sweet potatoes. Um, uh, yeah, I, I reside in Jackson, Mississippi. So how has COVID affected you? I guess, we haven't talked to you since maybe early in the year. And tell us about when it hit and what it did to the projects you were working on and your personal life. Um, so um, around the first of the year, um, so February, that's when the warning signs kind of came. But um, I wasn't thinking about, I mean, just like all chefs and, uh, and everybody as people we wasn't thinking about a virus coming in so i already uh, you know designed my catering kitchen i was going to remodel it because i'm just was ready to go into a whole another marketing phase um i mean in, indoor smokers all that stuff and then COVID, um and it's just honestly it was a um i was depressed in march I mean, march was a march was a tough month and it took a couple weeks of just kind of, you know, hiding in a closet almost. Um, mm -hmm. And then I had a, a couple of my buddies to uh, reach out to me uh, mid-March, and they helped me get my creative juices going together. Uh, and we all just kind of came together. We talked every single day. We had Zoom talks, um, and, and it was good for me. Um, so I tell people a lot now, just just kind of bring people back in your life and, and you know, just have conversations conversations um so business had completely stopped and i wasn't sure what the next was and right at the beginning of april um i decided to kind of change up my concept at my catering kitchen i went forward with remodel and we've been busy since be since beginning of april and we are doing um six to eight events each week i run the restaurant to people houses and um, I got my kitchen remodeled, and we are still cooking great food, just searching for the best ingredients. Um, so it's been great, but it have taught me a whole lot of things of what my future uh, is going to look like. And uh, cash flow is king, So and, and, and just a lot of those things is just going to be a little different. You know, the thought process is going to be a little different. Well, Nick, about this catering uh, <clears throat> catering business, do you have another name for it, or is it Nick Wallace Catering? Um, it is Nick Wallace catering. Um, I haven't had a, I didn't change the name. Um, I, honestly, I want to get into that corporate role of it, but I don't want to have corporate food at all. Um, but I want my name to be what it is because people, honestly, all my first time clients, I'm always there. Now, if I'm doing a client for, and I've cooked for them six or eight times, I'll let my other staff go do them. Um, but all first-time clients, I'm always there to cook and, and, and to talk and, and to just put my finest um, talent right there. Uh, but it's been going um, pretty, pretty well. So how do people get in touch with you if they wanted to book an event or 
uh, have a catering at their business? Um, they could call. Um, they can call the business number at six zero one nine one nine six three two eight. We have two lines on that, or they can reach me at nick at nickwallaceculinary dot com as well, or visit the website and message me through that. Okay. Well, we won't lose you with all those different ways of communication. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. did the the projects down in Churchill near Natchez get put on hold? Um, uh, slightly. Um, and that's the other good thing about, you know, reconnecting with people and all. I have a really, really good best friend named Ashley Allen. Ashley is a wonderful chef from St. Thomas. Um, so, um, throughout this COVID time, Ashley moved, um, he's a Mississippi resident now. Um, so he moved to Natchez. So Ashley is going to be the chef, uh, for me. He's going to, you know, we're going to do things together. But um, so Churchill Variety and Churchill, Mississippi is going to be the first one to open its doors. Um, We're going to do that hopefully in the next month or so. Um, He has been doing pop ups at Smoots in Natchez, but doing things on a smaller scale just so everybody can stay safe. Um, So it's really not going to be full force until next year, of course, but it's still it's still moving forward. And I know your partner. uh or one of your partners in that enterprise is Tate Taylor. And of course, Tate has had a one more time has had a remarkable success with this TV series, filthy rich. And uh, I just keep waiting for you to show up on the screen. <laughs> I, I, hey, I told him, I told him it, it's nothing against uh Wolfgang Puck and Emerald Holzer, uh star chefs. And I love them. Uh, but I told Tate, I said, man, if we can just work out a deal that if you need somebody to just walk through a room and, and talk about that squash or that caviar. Let it be me, please. So yeah. he, he, he agreed to it. So we'll, we'll see what happens in the future. That's great. Well, I keep, I keep looking for you. I keep expecting you to be there. It's a natural. <laughs> yeah. It's- um, Nick, we talked last week. We, we just had, a, I think it was a news release or something. We just briefly mentioned this Dole Pineapple Project that you were involved with. And I hope you'll tell us about that and how that happened. It sounds like a wonderful opportunity for Jackson. Yeah, so Dole, Dole reached out to me, um, and um, I like to, I like definitely like to look at myself as a brand ambassador for the state. Um, that's all I want. I want to be able to be some part of, of some type of connector for the state. So Dole was that same connector. They called and they was looking for a chef to just kind of be that face over it and uh, started writing menus and doing videos and doing a lot of other content for Dole. And we started this partnership. But the, the only thing that I wanted from Dole was we don't need no three months, no one off partnership for Jackson, Mississippi for these kids. If you can commit to one year, I'll be involved. And they committed for a year. And it, and it may even go longer than that. And uh, I was super excited that a lot of it's being featured at the Boys and Girls Club. We give away meals uh, every other Saturday there. People can pull up. We give out at least a thousand meals. Um, it's the kids are involved. We we share recipes with the families. Um, we 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 talk about the product. Um, I have did a lot of product engineering with Dole products. I have cooked mango twenty different times. I've made mango ketchup. I've did everything <laughs> just to, you know, find good ways that I can be able to introduce this into families' lives so they can start eating more fruits and vegetables. Well, I, I read that this is a pilot project for them. So give us a little bit about the overview. It, it's aimed at children, but in, in what way? What is, what is the ultimate goal of it? The, the the ultimate goal of, of, you know, Sunshine for All, and that's the really good name of it, too, is to go to a lot of the areas that really, really need it. Um, so any city or any state can actually pick to have this pilot program into their area, too. And that's the great thing about it. Um, so they uh, this program is designed to go to a lot of areas that consider it as food deserts. So we're targeting West Jackson area, which don't have no grocery stores around it. And we do pop up farmer's markets, 
um, Dole is financially um, paying for a lot of the engineering, a lot of the product there, but they are asking for local partners too. And that's the great thing about it. Dole is not trying to come in and say, hey, we're going to do everything. No, they're they're giving you the the, the way the partnership is going to be designed. And that's the really good thing. They give you all the literature. Um, they, they give you backpacks that's full of uh, great, tasty treats for the kids to take home. Because honestly, these areas right here just really, really need fresh product. So it's like uh, it's like one of those pro- uh, pilot pro- product projects that can just all of you know it just starts it starts a trend and that's really good thing because i hope that this areas in texas can get it next because this area is all over the united states that really really need this and dole is faithfully gonna gonna put these pilot projects for the next 10 years in a lot of other states but we're the first that's the really good thing about it and you've been involved for quite some time with a variety of initiatives and programs uh, dealing with uh, healthy eating, uh, quality access to foods, uh, helping children understand where food comes from, working with the youth uh, around the state well, and in Jackson as well. Uh, and, and I know this is a continuation of that, but you also have another sort of nonprofit effort that you've been working on for years, right? Yeah, so my nonprofit is Creativity Kitchen, and it was started about uh, five years ago, and it started in uh, Jackson Public Schools, um, really geared towards the middle schools. And I was very successful off my first year run with that, that Jackson Public Schools wanted to get involved, the art museum got involved, um, and we had uh, Kellogg Foundation. We had a lot of people to come up and, and, you know, give their efforts and some financially and some just helping us with a lot of the literature and printouts and, and just showing their face and talking about what could be different in your life. Um, and, and creativity kitchen, honestly, is a connector for Dole. It's a connector for Nova Nordis. It's just a connector. And I just think that it's never been monetary for me too. And I think that's the reason why it's very successful too. I make my money in my, for profit with my catering business and all and these real nonprofit things is all about the kids. All about the yeah. kids. Well I think you and I share a couple of things. One is the philosophy that the more you give, the more you get. Uh, we also share a philosophy of having learned a lot uh, at the apron strings of our grandmothers. And we're gonna take a break in a minute, but headed toward that break, I want you to talk about your grandmother's queen and Linnell and their influence on you as a professional chef. Oh yeah. That's when you're going to see my face light up there. Just like (laughs) steaming in on me. (laughs) All right. We're going to take a quick break. Come back with chef Nick Wallace. He's going to tell us about his grandmother love. We'll also be happy to entertain any questions that you may have or comments you want to make. You can ask Nick a question. You can talk to Carol and I. We'll continue our conversation uh, with Nick Wallace upon our return. So stay tuned. Hi, I'm Ryder Taff, Portfolio Manager at New Perspectives, a fee-only financial advisory and co-host of Money Talks. Each week, we take your personal finance questions and tell you about a money topic we hope you find helpful. Money Talks can be heard Tuesdays at 9 a.m. on MPB Think Radio. Podcasts can be found on our website, money.mpbonline.org, or on your smart device's podcasting platform. You're listening to Deep South Dining right here on MPB Think Radio. Malcolm White from Carol Puckett. And if you've missed any part of today's show, you can listen back by subscribing to the Deep South Dining podcast or download the MPB public media app and listen to any past programs anytime you feel like it. Welcome back, Carol. And we are delighted today to have the one and only chef Nick Wallace joining us today. He's in his car and he's just come back from a fresh haircut. Hey, Nick, how you doing, man? Hey, Mel, that's no car. That's a truck. Oh, it's a truck. Oh, okay. That's a a real truck. 
It's a real truck. But this shows how hard it is for us to catch Nick Wallace. You have to catch him in his truck. He's he's a hard man to capture. He's on the move. That's right. So, Nick, when we went on break, I told you when we came back, I wanted you to talk a little bit about your grandparent, your grandmother's influence on your career choice. Yeah. So, so my, my, my grandmother's are my heartbeat and, um, and Miss Lindell, um, she, she knew, um, she laid down all the roots, man. She is, uh, she's one of the best chefs I ever, you know, ever will know, uh, very kind, very respectable. And, but she told that all that love has to be into the food as well. Um, so I learned all that. And then Queen Mars, she is the one that put the polishing, put the icing on the cake. That's 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 Queen. Queen um, was probably not as great of a of a of a cook as Miss Linnell, but um, Queen is she's such a doll. She is the one that um, has all the business. She has the business mind. Um, she definitely can cook. Um, she's the one that's going to kind of put the, all the pieces in the right place. So with that combination of these two wonderful people. You know, I couldn't go wrong. You know, I couldn't be more blessed to have that groundwork um, to be able to run off of with my life. Okay, so where does where do Queen and Linnell live? So um, Queen, um, mom, she lives with my mom full time now. My my grandmother, she she was in a bad car accident, so she is she is disabled. She still can get around um, pretty decent, so she's here in Jackson. Um, Miss Linnell. It's not going anywhere. She's rooted. She's rooted to Edwards. So if you want to find her, you can find her on Military Road in Edwards. She's not going nowhere, which I don't blame her. Because, uh, you know, we she... have a spot that's right, right behind Calming. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, does she still grow vegetables? She still grow um, vegetables. My uncle really does a lot of the work now. Um, my grandmother don't get out there as much. Um, a lot of things is really brought to her mostly. Um, so she still do a little bit of the cooking, but not as much as she used to. That's what they got me there for now. <laughs> That's well, why I, they trained you. <laughs> yeah, I know yeah. that they they are both so proud of you, and you know, can see your their influences on you every day. Yeah, it, it's it's very important to them because I'm I'm you know nobody has opened up a business in the family in the last you know fifty sixty years so that was the reason why I wanted to get out on my own and push it as hard as I can I was you know I bought a house nobody's bought a house in that same you know time length um, so I just wanted to you know my grandfather put a lot of groundwork in as far as how to be a man so I want to show him. I could be a man and I want to show it to my family and, and my grandmothers are, they, they are as spicy as a habanero. Let me tell you, <laughs> if you want, if you want somebody to get you in check, you go sit down next to that recliner because she will get you in check. She's got to make sure you do not lose it. <laughs> well, I, I, I bet they've had a pretty well <clears throat> time watching you on television and I bet every Body in Edwards knows every time you're yes. on television. She probably yes. gets the word around. Yes, yes. We're going to um, probably off this next show, we're probably going to do something in the square of Edwards and put a jumbotron up just so we can all family kind of get together and cook food. And, and because the town of Edwards is not that big, but uh, everybody there is super, super thankful. And that's the reason why I tell my story over and over and over and over again because I'm not ashamed of it at all. I don't have nothing to be ashamed about, but I just think it's it's very, very important for you to talk about where you came from, who had, you know, who, who tentacles you're still connected to. Talk about it um, because I'm very, very, very appreciative of, of uh, growing up in Edwards. Now, you've, uh, you've been on a lot of these TV competitive cooking shows. Uh, how did you get started in that? I know in 2017, you actually won the Chopped Alton Challenge. Yeah, I, actually, um, the kids uh, in Jack's Public Schools, they um, said, you know, they, was, they kept telling me that it was like, you need to get on Top Chef. You need to go out there, you know, go out there and win. And uh, honestly, I was um, didn't know if I was fit for it. So in 2014, I jumped on Cutthroat Kitchen and it was more of a game show kind of chef show. 
And I did that with Alton Brown and uh, I enjoyed it. But two, I, I, I knew how tough it is when people know you from Mississippi, you know, so I knew I had to do my best. I had to do my best to stay polished. So I placed second place then. And then that's when I started all the James Beard dinners and everything else. Then I came back for Chopped because then, you know, I was starting to get a little cocky. You know, I, I was feeling a little bit more, you know, determined to win, but determined to do my best. Um, and then I won. And, and just recently um, I jumped off to Canada to do a, a new show. And what That's was the, that? What's the new show? Um, so, so the new show is called Firemasters. Firemasters um, is going to be featured on the Cooking Channel uh, later this year. Uh, the way the way they work is they will let you know um, about a week in advance. It's going to be featured on the Cooking Channel. I think it's going to be around between uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas this year. So that's going to be my New Year's present. Um, is to sit there and Zoom and, 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 and be on Facebook Live and watch this with Mississippians. So I can't wait for everybody to see it. Well, Nick, I hope that you'll keep us posted just by text. I know you, you know how to find Malcolm and me so we can tell everybody when it's going to be yes. on. And, you know, I look back to that first show you did and I can just see that once people saw you on television, probably all the other producers and bookers of those shows look around and could see what a handsome, personable guy who represents Mississippi well. Yeah, and 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 it and it changed me. And then thank you too, Carol. It, but it it changed me for the better um, because one one of the competitors um, he was all over me, just saying I couldn't do anything but fry catfish and make comeback dressing and 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 you know he 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 just that was his thing he was like nick is going to stay in front of the deep fire the whole time so after leaving the show and all i had to let that just really sink in and i had a conversation with my grandmothers and she said that be proud about it but be very creative in your own way so my grandmother wasn't telling me to go get tattoos but that's what i did um she definitely wasn't saying to go get tattoos. So I went and put a catfish around my arm. I went and <laughs> put my dad's hands on my arm. So the next time I go to a show, I'm going to show them how proud I am of where I came from. And I'm going to show you who I am. And I'm not hiding from it either. And never hide from any catfish. <laughs> but yeah, that, I, I, I think that other chef was just trying to mess with your mind before the... It's true. Yeah, before the before the show. So there's a new uh, announcement that that was recently made about a partnership with Airbnb uh, that you're doing a virtual uh, experience with them. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so um, I started working with Visit USA about two years ago. Visit USA, we we go all around Mississippi. We we really did the Natchez area a lot. Um, so we went around and doing all these great shots of me in my kitchen and they put together some cool videos and, and they wanted to, you know, do Mississippi as a destination. So that's what they did. They featured on their website. So you can go to visit USA.com, I believe, and, uh, look at the Mississippi portion of it. So that led into Airbnb. Airbnb ha- hasn't never started doing online experiences in the Southeast, um, so a lot of people are, are very popular in Mexico area, Japan. Um, I think it may be um, Colorado. You know, it's really honestly what you do best. It could be making beer. It could be uh, tarot card reading. It could be making tacos. It could be all that kind of stuff there. So they was like, what, you know, we want to feature Mississippi on here for the first time. What do you want to do? And I was like, you know what? I'm going to do something sophisticated. I'm going to show people how to make all these great sauces. We may make gelatin, all that stuff there. And I'm like, my grandmother said, are you kidding me? So she, she was <laughs> like, you don't think that people want to know how to stew down some greens or fry some catfish or make cornbread? She said, stop running from who you are. So I changed <laughs> the menu and 
I'm doing braised collard greens with with tur- smoked turkey neck, <laughs> turkey wings. I'm doing cornbread. I'm doing fried catfish. I'm doing uh, the onion preserves that she loves to serve with her greens. And we're cooking together. I'm cooking with people that may be in Africa, you know, Maryland. They're all over the world. I have another one coming up this Wednesday. So I'm going to do this two and three times um, a week. It's extra income, but two, it gives me a chance to show my mom off. She may whip up the cornbread. People are going to people are interacting with you the whole time. But you're bringing Mississippi. We're putting Mississippi everywhere, and people are actually searching and getting smoked turkey wings, and they have never seen turkey wings before. They have never seen collard greens before, but they're so like impressed with Mississippi food. So I'm very thankful for that. Yeah. Well, thank goodness for your grandmother. And I think that we take for granted that everybody knows how to make cornbread and you know, everybody knows how to make greens. And it's just not so I many people in our own state and on our Facebook page, Cooking and Coping, that I, I hope you'll, you'll sign up for. I mean, we have yes. pe- people... Uh, we have like a cornbread demonstration uh, that a woman did. She's in Pennsylvania, but was from Mississippi. And she Mm. had like over a hundred and something people on Facebook Live just tuning in to make cornbread. Mm. Everybody Mm. wants to know how to make cornbread. So Nick, when you were talking, go ahead. Go ahead. ahead. No, I was just going to say that, you know, the, the one good thing about Mississippi that it took me a long time to realize people love us. People love our personality. <laughs> they love our hospitality. They love our hugs. That means they love our stories. Like, you can't go wrong with a Mississippian. I mean, just being completely honest. So now I may have not been like this 10 years ago or 15 years ago because I had to learn lessons Life. I'm, when I say Mississippian, I am a proud Mississippian, and it's going to continue to stay like that. So my grandmother didn't tell me to do that, but she has she had whipped me enough to get me <laughs> to where I am right now. <laughs> so. That's great. You know, Nick, when I was the state tourism director, uh, I used to say that that Mississippi uh, has one thing that not many other people have, and that is the curiosity factor. As you said, everybody's curious about Mississippi and whether they think we're weird or they think we're unique or they think for some reason because of the stereotypes that they're not going to like us. That just adds fuel to the fire for me and it sounds like it does the same for you. Hey, uh, Mal, Java Java let let us know that there's a caller who asked about a biscuit recipe and I'm supposing that means uh, she wants to know what Nick thinks here, here, Java, help us out here. Yeah, it was, it was a caller on the line and, um, she was just asking, you know, she's listening to Nick and, uh, wanted to know if he had uh, a a good biscuit recipe, you know, um, we had the, uh, greenhouse on Porter from uh, last week's show, um, on, on when talking about biscuit. So I guess she wanted to see if what was Nick's take on a biscuit. Yeah, no, absolutely. I have a I have a really good biscuit recipe because it's all about that soft and butter, and it's all about building layers. Um, so visit my website, and I believe it's one bread recipe on there. But I will go ahead and make sure I feature another one on there because it's a, uh, like twelve layer. It's twelve layer biscuit. Um, so you're you're wiping down butter and you're folding twelve times to get the perfect biscuit. But I tell you what, tasting this biscuit. You will never look at canned biscuits, those layer canned biscuits, ever the same anymore when you do this. Well, Nick, I want to know a little bit more about your technique. My uh, New Year's resolution for the year was learning to make biscuits, as is Malcolm's wife, Kara. So we've experimented a lot. And what we understand from talking to other people, that it is about technique. I mean, the ingredients for a biscuit are pretty much exactly the same but how, how do you get your butter into your flour how cold is it yeah my 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 butter is um i do my butter at um room temperature the the, the, the layer biscuits i love to do at room temperature really the, yeah the other biscuit uh dough we do cubes and it's cold it's cold 
and it melts down as you cook it and that kind of stuff. My layer biscuits, yeah, I, I don't like to do cold butter because it breaks up my layers with doing cold butter. I like for it to be smooth and I like to use a paintbrush to wipe down the butter and build layers that way. Oh, man. So it is two different ways, but I... Yeah, I encourage you to try one of the butter and building layers, please. I can't, I can't, uh, I, I can't wait, but I can't imagine what what pushes up the flour. I mean, if the butter is uh, is not cold, I cannot wait because working mm-hmm. that cold butter into the flour, you know, it always says you know, get it like pea size. Mm-hmm. That's hard to, hard to do. It's a lot. You have to do it a hundred times. To know, but I'm, I hope you'll put that on your website because I'm definitely after it. Yeah, and uh, I'm up for a Zoom call. Right, we had a little technical difficulty with that last answer from Nick, but I want to remind our listeners that we're talking about Nick's biscuit recipe, <clears throat> and it can be found on his website, which is Nick Wallace, N I C K W A L L A C E, culinary, C U L I N A R Y. Dot com Nick Wallace culinary dot com and you can get a chance to uh, see this recipe. What do you think, Carol? Well, I can't wait, and I kind of heard what he was saying to me. He was saying that he would do a Zoom call with me to, to help me with my biscuits, and I'm going to take him up on that. Hey, why not? You hear that, Nick? <laughs> Sounds good, Carol. Hey, hey, Nick, I have one more thing before we have yes. to go. We've got just got about four minutes left. When you were talking about uh, the greens uh, uh, that you were cooking, you mentioned, I think you said it was your mother's recipe for onion preserves. Can, can yes. you dig into that? That sounds amazing. I love like a chutney or, or some kind of a marinated vegetable with my greens. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, so uh, it's super simple, um, but the, I think the biggest part about this onion preserve is Vidalia onions. It's only done with Vidalia onions, but you're, you're cooking these onions down to skillet stand. Um, you're going to saute them for like five minutes. You're gonna glaze it with um, a little bit of vinegar. Um, you're going to add pectin in there, and you're going to finish it with butter. Yeah, pectin, the same pectin you use for doing pickles. Wow. You're gonna, add the, you're gonna add pectin, then you're gonna finish it with butter. Turn it off completely, whip the butter in, put it in a jar, put it in the refrigerator. But this is the good thing about the onion preserve. You can put it on burgers, sandwiches, you can eat it with crackers, you can do everything with it. Please try it. It is one of the best things. You can add a little bourbon in it too and cook the alcohol off. You can do all kinds of things with this onion preserve. It's wonderful. So it's uh, Vidalia onions uh, browned uh, with a little bit of, um, did, did you say vinegar? What did you say? Oh, well, we're, we're having a little bit of technical yeah. difficulty. Uh, there you are. Yeah, no worries. So apple juice, uh, apple cider vinegar. Um, you want to have probably a tad bit of water, pectin. Finish it with butter, and you get to go. Man, okay. that's terrific. Okay, Mal, that's what I want for Christmas. You want the, the onion preserves? Yeah, I've already made you and Java pear preserves. So, uh, oh, okay. Yeah, I, th- I think we need to go in a circle here. <clears throat> so, Nick, when you yeah. put it up, does the butter not yeah. coagulate in the refrigerator? Does it not kind of separate and when it gets cold? No. Oh, Because no. of the pectin? no, no, no. no. Because of the pectin, no. Okay, it all is right. all smooth, and you could just get a spoon, and you can use this to wherever, wherever it takes you. Use it. I put it over some grouper. I seared Ooh. some grouper, and as soon as it came out, I just spooned some of that onion preserve on it. And when you talk about delicious, oh my god! We're talking about glory in a jar here. We're talking about Nick Wallace's yeah. onion preserves. Nick, thanks for coming on the show, and we appreciate it every time. Thank you for having me. Deep South Dining is a production of Mississippi Public Broadcasting Stink Radio. It is funded by generous contributions from listeners like you. Our show is produced by the one and only Java Chapman. For my co-host, Carol Puckett, and our guest today, Chef Nick Wallace, I'm Malcolm White. Now stay tuned for Marshall Ramsey's show, Now You're Talking, followed by Southern Remedy at 11.00. 